the soil health is the most important thing really, so we're a soil farmer first. Everything relies on the soil health. Your soil health is part of every other aspect of your business, your financial health, your animal health, your own health. If you haven't got healthy soils and not up to standard, well you're not going to get the productivity you need to maintain a viable business in this day and age. Keeping your soils in good condition is really important because uh, having a soil in good condition underpins all your primary production. It's really critical to maintain your soils in good condition and that's really what we mean by the word soil health. You want soil to be doing all the things that it's capable of and because soil contains a lot of organisms that do things related to nutrient cycling and, and lots of other things that build the soil structure, you want that to all work properly. So it's the healthy soil is about a soil that's working at its capacity. When you've got good soil, there's, you're, you're making differences in terms of climatic regulation, preventing environmental damage like erosion and pollution runoff. It sort of ticks a few boxes having good healthy soil. Soil health and soil fertility are similar to me and there are three main components, physical, chemical and biological. Now in the past the focus was on the chemical fertility but now we know there's these components. But the trouble is, you can't separate the components because they're all interrelated. There's a couple of universal principles really, whatever type of agricultural activities you do. And the first one is keeping ground cover, so keeping your soil protected. The second one is to try and have living plants growing as much as possible. The roots of living plants are really prime soil function. And a third really important principle is plant diversity. So having diversity in your pastures and your crops um, is a critical driver of soil function. And then obviously in cropping systems, uh, minimising tillage or getting off tillage is a big one. And in grazing enterprises, it's really about how you graze your pastures to improve the root, root biomass of your pasture plants. If you're wanting to build soil, you know, the biggest driver is going to be living plants with roots in the soil that are putting out root exudates. And these are high um, energy carbon exudates that really provide the food source like no other for the microbes. And then that is extended by the fungal hyphae that's spread out into the soil. They also take those carbohydrates from the plant roots out further afield. So a lot of your annual plants are only going down sort of 100 mil. But if we can get the, the deeper rooting, tap rooting, um, roots to go in a lot of these regenerative mixes to go down sort of three, four hundred uh, mils or even down to a metre. Uh, we can then get the soil profile to be not just a small bit but it actually goes through the whole amount. You can then hold, retain a lot more water over time. So if you've just got a single species, you've got a reduced diversity of microbial things going on. So that range of plants influences the organisms and you get a bigger range of organisms doing their thing. But that's probably also better for the animals because they eat, we don't eat just one sort of food all the time. We eat a range of food. So it's putting on the platter a range of food. Different actions on the soil has been really important. Uh, trying to get more perennials established, particularly in our drylands. We've had some really good success with chicory and plantain. And in the future, we'll plant high succession perennials to give a wider feed selection for our cattle over a wider time of year and have those living roots in the ground feeding our biology year round. We're trying to, to set up these different trials here in multi-species so to see if we can actually adapt them into our dairy area in Busseldon and um, make the soil more productive from having a greater amount of microbes and ways of being able to utilise the minerals that are in the ground and the fertiliser we put on. It's easy to destroy some of the benefits of a mixed pasture by overgrazing. So the overgrazing affects the roots as well as the shoots. So you want to balance the grazing and many farmers know how this can be done and, and they have innovative ways of pasture management. If a plant is this tall, it has roots this deep and it you know, dies off at the start of summer. Whereas we let our hybrid kales and radishes and, and all of the multi-species crops get half a metre long. So the roots go right down. And if we grow plants with deep roots, we're capturing that carbon in the form of roots up to half a metre deep instead of in the top five centimetres. So we fenced everything into little four hectare paddocks and we split that in half so there'll be 500 sheep on two hectares for two days. We just move them around. They know what we're all about when it's time to move. From the purely commercial side of things, rotational grazing 
and making much better utilisation of your pasture means you can actually run more sheep. There's a, a greater change towards looking at soil in a, perhaps a different way than we have in the past, where we've got to make sure that, you know, what we leave for the next generations is, is more productive than what we've gained it in. We love our farms and, yeah, to see them actually getting better and to see the life coming back to the land, equally that helps us in our production enterprise. It's just a, yeah, it's a very satisfying um, pursuit. So if you're just starting out and looking to build your soil health up and not sure where to start, really going along to some workshops to educate yourself, to build a bit of knowledge for yourself around what is soil health and, and why it's important. The next step is to try and work out what key steps you can do on your place. You can't do the whole lot the same across your farm because you've got nothing to go against what would normally happen. So just doing a small paddock, don't try and take it to large scale the first year. It's a good opportunity in this space of soil health for farmers to take some leaps ahead of the scientists to try things and then we'll come behind it and try to understand it. They've got a lot of opportunities to share their knowledge and talk about what they're, what they're doing on their place and how that might help each other. A colleague of mine, Cheryl Rimmer, said, let's make a soil health app and put my knowledge of soil on it. Right, and I thought, oh, what is a soil health app? There's an e-book. Just short videos of processes that are going on in soil, so there's seven of those. And then there are podcasts, there are more than 20 podcasts of me talking about various aspects of soil. It's easy and accessible and free. Well I've been uh, farming now for a bit over 50 odd years, so we've tried a lot of different things over that period of time as new ideas have come into play. We're still trying to learn how to farm, and there's a lot of literature out there, a lot of understanding, and a, a lot of people to talk to about you know, different ways of being able to achieve the same outcome in producing high quality food for West Australians. Everyone is farming their piece of land for the betterment of everyone around them. That's the animals on our property, that's the soil on our property, it's our local community and it's planetary health. Although we're early adopters and there's still plenty of challenges, there's a huge support network out there as well.